Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we have been discussing about the basic in engine construction and we have seen two designs. So, one is a two stroke engine and we, we have also seen a four stroke engine. And I have also mentioned that uh, they are actually, uh, let us say, uh, the mechanism of the operation of the piston connecting rod and the crankshaft is actually a variation of a four bar chain. So, let us try to understand this four bar chain. Okay. So, what we have Okay. So, essentially we have seen this mechanism operating in the videos. So, this was our piston, okay. this was our connecting rod, this was our crank shaft and this was essentially rotating. Okay. So, there was of course a bearing here, you have seen in the video there was a bearing here, there has to be a bearing here, there has to be a bearing here and then you essentially get W out from this crank shaft. Okay. And of course, there was the, the cylinder here, this was the cylinder okay, in which the piston was going up and down, there was some valve mechanisms here, there were some valves. Okay. And the piston was reciprocating. Okay. So, now the question is can we have let us say an engine which does not work on a reciprocating motion being converted to rotary motion. Okay. Because for a simple reason is that this, this particular uh, let us say friction here, the friction at this point. Okay. The friction at this point is reasonably large and it would be nice if you can think of an engine which avoids this type of a this type of a reciprocating motion okay and only works with a rotary system so because we all know that the rotary friction is usually much less than a reciprocatory friction and whenever there is friction part of the part of the heat which we have converted to work when we are converting this work here some some part of the energy gets wasted in this friction Okay. So, now there is one bearing here, one bearing here, one bearing here, there may be other bearings, there may be other shafts. So, essentially what we get as W out okay, is actually a little less of course, because you have frictions which have to be overcome. So, people thought of let us say making why not have a rotary engine, can we have a rotary engine, okay. can we have a rotary engine. Okay. So, let us try to see a rotary engine in which these frictions will be less. Okay. However, there are other problems which come and we will see and one of the, uh, uh, one of the earlier designs okay, of a rotary engine is called as a Wankel engine. As we were discussing, we have to now see the operation of a Wankel engine which is called as a rotary engine. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, uh, this is a Wankel engine. Okay. And this is a completely rotary engine. So, you remember uh, we have induction of the fresh charge, okay. compression of the charge, you can see compression of the charge, then there is a spark plug, then there is a spark plug which is here okay. and this spark plug again ignites the engine and you can see exhaust taking place from this particular system. And you have a planetary gear mechanism which is operating in the center and you can see these are the combustion chambers, you can see the combustion chamber here. Okay. In a reciprocating engine, okay, this particular combustion chamber is actually the, the reciprocating piston and the cylinder makes the, so this, this piston and this cylinder, they make the combustion chamber. So, this is, this is the combustion chamber. Okay. And in a Wankel engine, you can see that this is the combustion chamber here. So, now this combustion chamber, this particular volume, this is our system. So, this fresh charge comes in, this very special design of the lobe, you know this, this particular Wankel lobe, it, it, is, it is in such a manner that it compresses as it travels and as, as it comes to this point, a spark occurs and then of course, the expansion takes place. So, this is like a, a rotary engine. Now, the question which you will ask is 
that why are most of the engines uh, in the in the in the world they are actually reciprocating and not uh, let us say this type. Of course, as we were discussing about the friction, the friction is definitely less, the friction is uh, is definitely less in this because it is a pure rotary motion and it it is it looks very elegant. However, you have to appreciate one thing that this particular let us say point, this particular point okay, this is a metal to metal you have to construct this lobe in such a manner that when the compression is taking place this compressed air does not get leaked. In a similar manner when expansion is taking place the leakage between this point and the, uh, the other three chambers. So, there these three chambers should not talk to each other because the pressures are very different in these three adjoining chambers. Okay. So, what essentially happens is that over a period of time because of wear and tear, okay, it is very difficult to maintain this particular lobe structure and maintain a very good seal between these three chambers. Because the pressures and temperatures of each of these three chambers okay, is different and therefore, what happens is that there is a tendency of gases being leaked from the high pressure area to the low pressure area and over a period of time with wear and tear happening this particular uh, let us say efficiency of compression then the leakage the leakages etcetera are not uh, let us say acceptable. And therefore, in spite of the fact that this is a very uh, good decent uh, let us say operation of an engine uh, Wankel engines are actually not in regular operation in all automobiles uh, you will see most of them 99.99 percent mostly are uh, actually. Uh, let us say reciprocating uh, based. And how do we do the sealing in a reciprocating engine? So, what essentially is done is that this friction which we were talking about, this friction has to be reduced and also when combustion takes place inside this combustion chamber and the pressure rises, the gases should not leak to this side of the let us say engine, the, the, the gases should not, uh, uh, they should not come from here to here. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen is that the enthalpy which we have generated which has to be transferred to work, this enthalpy will actually be lost and the engine efficiency will go down. And therefore, I am again introducing a new word, what you have is you have some piston rings here, okay. you have some piston rings here uh, which essentially are on both sides of this, they are, they, uh, they are circulating the piston, they are on the, on the outer periphery of the piston there may be multiple piston rings. So, we in the next lecture we will be talking about uh, the piston rings and these piston rings are actually uh, responsible for sealing let us say the, the combustion chamber. So, that uh, the exhaust gases or the high uh, the, the compressed charge does not leak okay, to this side of the engine. Okay. So, uh, what you have to remember is that although Wankel engines are pretty decent, I mean they are, they are very elegant, they, uh, they, they, they work on only a, a, a rotary type of a mechanism and they also achieve the four thermodynamic processes of suction, of compression, of ignition and doing positive work and then exhaust, they do the same let us say processes into a, into a very special lobe structure by a rotating mechanism. Okay. So, uh, but uh, as I have said that it is very difficult to sustain and make multiple engines which, uh, which do not wear out over a period of time. So, from a long term efficiency purpose, uh, Wankel engines are not into, uh, into production uh, of uh, uh, standard automobiles or standard IC engines. Almost all of them are reciprocating type which is essentially converting the reciprocal motion of the piston and this, this is brought about by the, the combustion process in the combustion chamber and this is transferred through uh, the connecting rod through the crankshaft to the output. This output can as I said it can be a propeller, it can be for example in a, in a, in a, in a ship. Uh, if I was talking to you about large ships. So, in a large ship <coughs> usually your propeller is here, you have a propeller here and then there is an engine which operates and this there are pistons and cylinders 
there are multiple pistons and cylinders can be here and usually your ship uh, the water level is something like that and your propeller uh, let us say gets this is the shaft this is the W out okay, uh, which you get at the propeller. So, in this the in the last three lectures what we have covered up is the construction of a two stroke engine, a construction of a four stroke engine and also the same processes can be done in a rotary fashion in a Wankel engine and that also we have seen how a Wankel engine works.